This is Power Up, where groundbreaking wind energy ideas become your clean energy future. Here's your hosts, Alan Hall and Phil Totaro. Phil, this episode of Power Up is going to focus on cooling. And as wind turbines get bigger and bigger, thermal controls are become more important. You need to make sure that there's no thermal runaways. And with the amount of power, 8, 10, 12, 15 megawatts going on inside of some of these nacelles, you're seeing a lot of patents and innovation around cooling. And this first one is from Siemens Gamesa. And it has to do with the generator itself. And the, the patent describes a cooling system for the generator that places air channels to con better control temperature uh, within the generator. And now, the key feature includes the magnet elements arranged in rows with groove-like recesses that allow for targeted airflow between the components. Now, that design creates multiple cooling paths with gaps somewhere between like a half a millimeter and 10 millimeters wide that enable better heat dissipation. So obviously Siemens Gamesa sees the future, which is thermal control in a generator, because if you have overheating in generators, that can be quite expensive to fix. So they're trying to address it up front, Phil, with this basically airflow pattern. Yeah, and, and as you mentioned, not only are generators getting bigger, um, but particularly for offshore, the operational efficiency matters a lot. And how you control um, both the flux density and efficiency of the generator balanced against how you have to cool the thing to maintain the kind of an air gap that you need in order to get the efficiency you want, um, it, it just throws um, you know these thermal engineers into complete chaos most of the time. So the way that they're uh, architecting this is so that you can control the airflow in those uh, channels in between the, the magnet holders um, to prevent hot spots. For the long term, if it keeps happening and you keep getting the hot spot, it can actually cause a uh, thermal degradation in um, the magnets and in um, the, the generator structure itself. So again, in order to maintain kind of peak operational efficiency, cooling becomes a, uh, a critical component to that. Our second patent is from Goldwyn, and it is also focused on cooling up in the nacelle. And it uh, is an idea that is wrapped around uh, really a sophisticated cooling control system uh, that uses predictive temperature monitoring to optimize cooling. And as you can well imagine, as these generators get bigger, there's just a lot of nooks and crannies, and you need to be able to monitor the whole nacelle area for temperature increases and to control it. Well, this system connects uh, a, a cooling device and a yaw controller to a frequency converter that controls the operation based on the predictive temperature thresholds. Now, uh, the key innovation is the ability to anticipate when cooling will be needed and by calculating future temperature profiles and allowing a more proactive reaction to that temperature control. So they're, they're using a lot more information to predict where the temperatures will be. And what it sounds like, Phil, is they're kind of yawing the turbine out of peak power s slightly to control the temperature to, so they don't have a thermal runaway. Yeah, and, and what makes this uh, innovation really unique is, as you mentioned, the fact that they have it connected to the frequency converter itself because what they can do with that and how that's going to impact and influence the um the temperature prediction is they can look at frequencies over time and see if there's you know a substantial increase or decrease um in in the frequency on the converter and use that to kind of inform um, this this predictive model that they're going to use to determine you know how much they need to kind of I've likened this to you know you're you're flat on the accelerator in your car or something and then you kind of let off a little bit uh, to to just let everything cool down and then you know you you step back on on full throttle once uh, you know your your brakes and your bearings all get back down into a, a temperature range that that's you know not going to cause your wheels to explode. Uh, it's, it's kind of a similar principle here with being able to connect this first to um, the frequency converter um, and use that to influence the the model and the signals that are that are being generated. And then secondly, as you mentioned, connecting it to the yaw system is also very unique in that they want to be able to, um, you know, just angle the turbine slightly so that, as you mentioned, it's not on peak power 100% of the time because that can cause, you know, thermal degradation. 
So it's a it's a really clever idea. I like it. And our third patent is from GE Renewables over in Spain, and, and the patent is very similar to the Goldwyn one, actually. And it's a method for dynamically adjusting the wind turbine power output based on component temperatures. And in this particular case, they're instead of it's just using ambient temperature to determine the power decision. So in Spain, it can get quite hot, or in India, it can get quite hot. But instead of just monitoring outside temperature, internal temperature inside the nacelle around the generator, they have a system to monitor multiple component temperatures. And then you have a thermodynamic model that predicts what the the temperature will climb to in in this particular uh, patent. They also talk about uh, derating, essentially, the turbine, mm. slowing it down, let everything cool down a little bit and stabilize so it doesn't have a thermal runaway. So the GE approach is a little different in that they're looking at basically sensors that probably already exist in the turbine and using that knowledge to then create a thermodynamic model. So the idea is similar, Phil, to what Goldwyn was proposing. Yeah, similar, but what GE is specifically talking about is how you're you're uh, establishing the maximum power set point. And so that's not something that uh, Goldwind had contemplated in theirs. Um, and what GE is trying to do with this is ensuring that as I as I mentioned when describing the Goldwyn patent, you know, if you if you liken this to, you know, keeping your foot on the accelerator in a car, what GE is doing is they're they're controlling when you let off and and put your foot back on. But normally, how a lot of companies do it is, you know, you you let off the accelerator and and in the case of a wind turbine, you're kind of derating down to the point where the thermal sensor triggers, you know, a, a below threshold kind of thing, and then you know you can ramp power back up. What GE is specifically doing is. They're using the temperature, uh, whether it's thermocouples or other, you know, temperature sensors that are that are monitoring, um, you know, the the components in the turbine. They're using that to determine the the maximum power set point, so that at all times they're outputting as much power as they possibly can. They're not just letting their foot off the accelerator; they're you know completely and then putting it back on. They're basically throttling back a little, um, and but still giving you know their their customers, basically, of, of their wind turbines, the maximum amount of power output that they can. Does that create a hunt and peck situation for the turbine that it's going to be yawing quite a bit to maintain that peak power without thermal running away? They can tune it to the point where it's not going to be as much hunt and peck and, and cause a lot of issues with the yaw system. To be blunt, I haven't actually seen whether or not they've implemented this yet. Um, so we've we've kind of marked this down as something that we hope they um, explore at some point in the future commercially, because I, I think it'd be a, a really clever addition to um, their, their technical repertoire and something that's probably, you know, a desirable uh, a bit of functionality for, you know, an asset owner or an operator to to have is, you know, keeping the turbine's maximum power set point at literally the the maximum it can possibly be at all times um, while maintaining the, the thermal regulation on all the components in, in, uh, in the nacelle. And that's the key to operating a wind turbine. You can have, make one part of the turbine more efficient, but you have to look at what the downstream effects are. And if you start damaging yaw brakes and yaw motors, it may not be worth it. So it's a real trade-off. It's it's complicated. There's there's always design compromises whenever you're doing uh, any type of system optimization, particularly around controls. And as we talked about a few weeks ago on on Power Up, you know, you can you can over optimize uh, a, a little bit too much and and have way too many controls doing way too many opposing things. Uh, so this is one of those where it, it requires dependence and, and interaction with a mechanical system. Um, so that's something that in order to not induce wear on the turbine, that's probably something that, that takes a, a good degree of, of precision and um, a, a good degree of importance, too, uh, when, again, it comes to both the, the engineering side of it and the operation side. 